Hi, my name is Lisa Marlowe, and I am a teacher at Alpins Park School in Cheltenham School District. I am also the chair of the Education Committee at the Holocaust Awareness Museum, where we've recently moved to Knesset, Israel, in Elkins Park. I am currently the guest curator of a Holocaust art exhibit titled Journey into Darkness, Heal with the Beauty of Life, at the Temple Judea Museum at Knesset Israel. This Holocaust art exhibit will be featured through the first week in July. If you would like to see it in person, you can call the KI office at 887-8700 and make an appointment. The appointments are during the week 10 to four. But if you are unable to come see the exhibit in person, I want to give you a quick little tour. So as you enter KI, you come to the Temple Judea Museum in our lobby, and you walk in and you will see different types of artwork that represent the Holocaust. I want to show you a video of one of the artists named Harry Summers. Harry Summers was a Holocaust survivor who became a famous American artist. Some of the paintings in this exhibit are from Harry and will be part of the permanent collection at the Holocaust Awareness Museum. A film was created to show his life, and this is the trailer. There are some things that stay with you for a long, long time. I am one of the last survivors. The Nazis came, they dragged some Jewish men out of streetcars for the first time in my life that I saw someone killed. All the synagogues were burned, all the Jewish shops were destroyed, passports were not available. I had to leave my family, and needless to say, all the people are left. Tighted in camps. was taken from him and still he survived. I learned how to forgive. The more you hate, the more you die. Harry's life and its meaning has been to bring beauty to people. I wanted to show a world that I experienced when I was young. A brighter world. Here is a man who is facing death. I mean, I don't know how many days he has. I don't know how many months or years. I'm at peace. This world is heaven. I think Harry can teach the next generation, no matter what somebody goes through, that you can always find the joy in happiness and the beauty of life. I was influenced by him by his positivity, by his lack of fear, by his courage, by his love. I realize that my weeks are numbered, and I try to live with him as best as I can. You have to look at what you have given him, and he can look forward and say, I have given him I am blessed that I am here at a time in his life when he does not have to face this journey alone. What happens when you leave this world? I don't know. One way or another, I'm going to find out. So you will see some of Harry's original paintings at the exhibit. And my students and I were very fortunate four years ago to receive the transcript to that film. And my students and I wrote a book based on Harry's life. And what the students did was write poems based on that poetry and those paintings. This is one of the paintings that is from the book that is also at the current art exhibit, as well as this one. So the film brought a lot of attention to Harry's story. Sadly, Harry passed away before the film was finished. These are some of my students who wrote poems for that book. 
They are current 10th graders, and here are some of them sharing their poetry. This is Alad. This is Amber. This is Max. And this is Mia. I get by this with such an ease, and I wonder as the wind blew, would this still be a little house of two? Can I brush it off like this white essence on me, or will it last forever? I may never know how my fate could have deferred if that horrible event hadn't occurred. Would six million people be saved or washed away like a wave? I wonder, would this still be a little house of two? Hi, I'm Amber. I was a student at UT in sixth grade, and I wrote this poem for one of Harriet Summer's feet. By the window stands a pot of flowers. How wonderful is it to be mesmerized by its power. It shows its signs of true love and they who lift a feeling of being touched by a dove. Harry felt the weight off his shoulders as he reflected on getting older. Love and happiness led him to paint beautiful pictures where he could escape. His goal was to help others feel at peace with the world to let their problems become a liveless world. Hi, my name is Mia Cruz, and I'm a former student of Miss Marlowe. Um, this is the book that she wrote, and we, our students, got to write poems in it. So I'm going to read you mine. Like a storm, the Nazis in your rage, people hiding in fear as they age. Harry had to leave his family behind, not knowing what the future holds and the rest of his life of days. Um, I Hi, I'm Max. Um, I was a sixth grader EP working on this Harry Summers project. This is the original painting of the painting that I wrote a poem corresponding with. So this is the poem that I wrote. Um, this cold wintry day might be my last, so I take a walk on this icy path. I might slip and fall, but I'll get back up. I will sit down because I still can and enjoy the cold air and look around. I will look at the pretty falling down trees, those trees deciding my fate, not knowing what will happen next, having to just wait, wait, wait. So this is another painting that you would see at the exhibit that is Harry's. And then we move into Frank Root's work. This is Frank Root's wife, Ruth, and she's going to explain his artwork. You show it. Um, I would say judging, approximating by the number of bricks that you can see depicted here, this is maybe a, about a 50 foot space or so, but in reality it is three inches deep. So it's a combination of physical perspective and what he called forced perspective. Um, if there was one thing that he knew, one technique that he knew, it was one point perspective. <laughs> and he would use that to his advantage in forcing the viewer into the into the image. So you're always it's always as if you're standing right in the front of the thing and you're not looking at it from a distance. You are part of the experience. Um, so the exhibit in Youngstown, Ohio, which was the biggest um, venue that he had shown in, a group of women came up to him who were all very, very emotional, crying, holding on to each other. And they demanded him to tell them, how did he know this? How did he, how did he know about their experience? Because it was clear that he had not experienced it in a physical, timely way. And he didn't know how he knew. He just knew that the knowledge that he, he was uh, gaining and the support that he was getting was so compelling to him that it reached someplace very, very deep in him. And it bothered him sometimes that he didn't know why he did this. And he would say to me, why am I doing this? And I would say, well, this is what artists do. You make images about how you're feeling and about where you are in the world. And I guess there's something about So Frank Root's artwork is very powerful because it shows the darkness of the Holocaust. They are three dimensional where you, as you heard Ruth say, feels you're in the scene. Um, so it's very powerful. You kind of understand the Holocaust when you see the artwork in person. And then Harry's work kind of brings you into the beauty of life. So that's why we have the journey into darkness and then heal with the beauty of life.
So there are some other pieces of artwork at the exhibit. This was a very interesting model that an artist did. He used to work for a actual a car company and created this exhibit. Upstairs is where our Holocaust Awareness Museum is now located. And again, we will have a grand opening in September and I hope you can all join us. As you go through the exhibit, there are some QR codes you can actually do right now to see videos of Holocaust survivors from our museum and liberators who were amazing speakers. This is Dr. Liam Bass, who has passed away, but he um, made it his life mission to tell people what he saw when he liberated Buchenwald. The QR code on the left is of Ika Zygomontowicz. She was an Auschwitz survivor who sadly passed away last year. And then Annalise Nussbaum on the right side, who also sadly passed away last year. These QR codes show their stories and they were amazing speakers at Hammock. We just recently lost Michael Herskovitz on the left. Again, if you scan that QR code, you can hear his story. He was an incredible speaker. And David Tuck is one of our um, rock stars, as we call him. He speaks to thousands and thousands of students a year. And again, you can scan that QR code to see his story. On the left is one of the exhibits we have showing the artwork at Theresienstadt. And this was actually the teacher who brought in a suitcase full of art um, resources for children to do art in the camp, which we know was a model camp, which was just a farce really. Um, but 4,500 paintings were um, saved. Um, they were hidden. And that's where the I Never Saw Another Butterfly book comes into play. You may have read that book. And then Ilsa Lindemeyer on the right, um, she was an amazing speaker and actually was a spy for the United States Army. We have her army jacket at Hammock upstairs and you can scan that QR code to hear her story. We currently have these two incredible speakers. They speak together. Ernie Gross was um, in the gas chamber waiting line basically when American troops liberated him. And one of those American troops was Don Greenbaum, who um, never really spoke about what, how he liberated the camp, but the two of them actually lived near each other, only a mile away for years and years, never knew each other, but recently um, connected and they now speak together and their story is really remarkable. So again, these are the QR codes to hear their story and their friendship. So I think using art to teach the Holocaust is very powerful, and I hope you get a chance to see the exhibit. If not, we are hoping to showcase it upstairs in our new space at Knesset Israel. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at lmarlo at chelnham.org. And thank you so much for your interest in learning more about the Holocaust. Just one last note, the Holocaust Awareness Museum will continue to provide Holocaust survivor stories. If you would like your school district to have a survivor, you can contact us at hammock.org or you can also email me.